I used to get these confused so much and these is one of those services that yes what they do is kind of similar but it's just the names that confuse you so today again I am going to clear it up hey everyone and welcome back to my channel where I talk tech and productivity but try to make it as fun as possible because everyone's trying to have fun, right? So, um, I've been doing a series of AWS videos focused on essentially helping you get through doing the Certified Cloud Practitioner, which I got certified in um, a few months ago now, I think. So yeah, let's dive right into today's content. When I was practicing for the exam, I would oftentimes like really mix up certain concepts and the sample papers that I was doing as well would put two services that were slightly similar either in name or in function and a lot of times I got confused. So this video is something that I wish I had to go through just a few of those services that I always confuse and draw the line. Yes, draw the line, make it clear what the differences between those services are and what essentially they're used for. If this sounds like something that'll be valuable to you, uh, stick around and let's get into it. First concept I'm going to talk about is the difference between an IAM user and an IAM role. So firstly, what is IAM? IAM is Amazon's Identity Access Management Service that essentially allows um, you to manage users and what they have access to and even services and what they have access to. An IAM user is a long-term credential for a specific person. Whereas IAM roles do not actually have any credentials but they are assumed by people, right? And also services for short-term purposes. So when you think of IAM user, think of a person who has credentials and is a long-term user. When you think of IAM roles, think of something that anybody can have and also services can have that give them access to certain abilities and functionalities within your AWS environments. The second service we're going to be going into today is CloudWatch and Cloud. Trail. I used to get these confused so much and these is one of those services that yes what they do is kind of similar but it's just the names that confuse you. So today again I am going to clear it up. CloudWatch allows you to monitor your applications and generally check for operational health. CloudWatch provides you with actionable items and insights about your services and how they're performing. So it gives you a general insight into your operational health, right, of your services. Whereas AWS CloudTrail allows you to see API calls that were made in your account and basically gives you log information about this. This could be things like the person who made the API call, when they made the API call, the IP address they made the API call from. Essentially, when you think CloudWatch, think about the services and the health of your services and monitoring that. And when you think CloudTrail, think about logging API calls. So when I'm doing my exam, anytime I see anything to do with API calls, the first thing my mind goes to is CloudTrail. The third service we're going to go into is the difference between Amazon ECS and Amazon EKS. Amazon ECS stands for Elastic Container Service and Amazon EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. So what is the difference? The firstly both container services that are fully managed. If you don't know what a container is, it essentially contains code. But on a more serious note, Containers essentially package code and all their dependencies so that it can be run on different environments. So when would you use Amazon EKS versus Amazon ECS? Amazon ECS is an Amazon container and you can also run these on EC2 instances. And what that means is that you can actually manage the virtual machine that the container is running on. If you don't want to do that, you can also run it on Fargate, which is essentially serverless, so you do not have to manage servers. So that's quite a good, um, flexible option. However, 
Amazon EKS runs on Kubernetes, which is one of the largest sort of container running services. So it's actually quite good for um, companies that already have containers running on Kubernetes, but want to transfer um, their workload to the cloud. Now, let's look at the difference between Amazon SNS and Amazon SQS. Amazon SNS stands for Simple Notification Service, whereas Amazon SQS is Simple Queuing Service. Amazon SNS works on a published subscribe system. So essentially, users subscribe to a certain topic Right, And then when something is published to that topic, it's then pushed to the users who are signed up for that topic. SQS is a distributed queuing system, so services pull messages from SQS. Using SQS, you can store, send, and receive messages between different software components without needing other services to be available. This is what we know as a loosely coupled system, and that's essentially reducing the dependencies between different services, so if one's down, the other one can still work. The last set of services we're going to go over is the difference between AWS budgets and AWS cost explorer. With AWS budgets, you can essentially set a limit of what you would like to spend, and you can then get alerts to ensure you do not exceed that amount. You can budget both costs and capacity. Whereas AWS Cost Explorer allows you to explore your AWS cost and usage with different filters and in a very, very visual manner. Oftentimes I'll see questions asking for services that enable users to be able to visualize their costs and that's usually referring to Cost Explorer. And that's it folks there's so many services that did not reach the shortlist and to be honest i could do like a 10 hour long video on it but i'm not gonna do that to you guys but if there's anyone that you really really found confusing i'm always happy to make a part two um and talk about those as well thank you for watching and if you found this content interesting and valuable please give it a like button and if you'd like to see more feel free to subscribe see you later